The universe as we know it today began about 13.8 billion years ago, and the first stars started forming not long after that. However, back then elements heavier than hydrogen and helium effectively did not exist, meaning the first stars lacked any usable material to form planets. But even if they did, it was unlikely they'd form planets anyway, because the first stars were incredibly massive and short-lived. After these stars got out of their way, the supernovae dispersed the elements needed to get planet formation underway for the next generation of stars, and that's where the oldest planets in the universe come in. Chances are you've probably heard of at least one of these planets before, PSR B1620-26 b, also unofficially nicknamed Methuselah. It's a gas giant, so around 12 billion years old. There's also TOI 157b, around a star that may be around 12.8 billion years old, and HE 1523-0901, though the planet around this one doesn't have a confirmed mass and is actually decently likely to just be another star. But gas giants are one thing. They're interesting planets, sure, but there's something especially interesting, at least to me, about an old rocky planet like Earth. I think the concept of a really old planet is easier to grasp when you can imagine that planet as something you can actually walk around on. And more importantly, the earliest planet-forming stars had very low metallicities. Somewhat counterintuitively, stars with low metallicity, made of mostly hydrogen and helium, actually form less gas giant planets on average, which need large rocky cores to form. If there isn't enough solid material to make gas giant cores, gas giants won't form. So it's likely that a very large amount of the oldest planets are small, rocky planets around the size of Earth. There will of course always be exceptions, like the old gas giants I've already mentioned, but there are probably countless extremely old rocky planets we haven't found yet, some of them probably older than the first gas giants. Unfortunately, rocky planets are harder to find than gas giants, so we don't currently know of many super old ones. But there are still a couple candidates. So what are the oldest known rocky planets like, and is there anything interesting we can say about them? The first planet I want to talk about is TOI 561b, the first of a system of four or potentially five planets. All of them orbit a sun-like star, 78% the mass and 85% the radius of the sun, which is estimated to be around 10 billion years old. However, there's a significant margin of error in that number, and it could really be anywhere from 7 to 13 billion years old, with 10 an estimate made by one study. The star was also the first member of the Milky Way's thick disk, a disk of material composed almost entirely of old, metal-poor stars, found to have transiting exoplanets. When imagining old planets, I personally imagine cold, dead worlds far from their stars. This is absolutely not the case for TOI 561b, which is an ultra-short period planet that takes just 0.4 days, or just under 11 hours, to make a full orbit of its star. This makes this planet extremely hot, with an estimated equilibrium temperature, assuming no atmosphere, of about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2,270 Celsius. The planet also receives over 5,000 times more starlight than Earth does. This means TOI 561b likely has oceans of lava on its surface, though the exact composition depends on the composition of the planet. And there has been a significant amount of debate on that. Different studies have proposed wildly different masses for the planet, though everyone agrees that its radius is about 40% larger than Earth's. A 2020 study put the planet's mass at about 3.2 Earth's, which would suggest it's rocky but has an iron-poor composition. But a different 2020 study put the planet's mass at between 1.59 and 1.83 Earth's, suggesting it has significantly lower density and could even have a large amount of water in the form of an extremely dense steam atmosphere. The most recent information I can find about this planet is a 2024 study that puts its mass at about 2.02 Earths, which would still mean it has a pretty low density, much lower than Earths. Of course, given that the star is 10 billion years old, we then have to ask how it's held on to any volatile material, like water, for that long, since it's so close to its star. The paper that found the lowest mass suggests that it has a very dense steam atmosphere that may make the planet appear larger than it actually is, which would make the true density of the planet higher. I'm also personally skeptical of this planet being very water-rich, because of a few interesting papers I read that will be the subject of an upcoming video, which basically suggests that most of our water world candidates are actually just carbon planets in disguise. But I'll explain more in the video when it comes out. For now, TOI 561b is a bit of a mystery, and we don't really know what's going on with it. But at the very least, it's around the size of a rocky planet, and could have a rocky composition. The other four planets in the TOI 561 system are much bigger. TOI 561 c is a mini-Neptune about 5.93 Earth masses and 2.86 times wider than Earth that takes 10 days to orbit the star. 
TOY561D is much bigger, around the mass of Uranus, taking 26 days to orbit the star, but is actually smaller than planet C in radius, due to its higher mass pulling down its atmosphere more. TOY561E is about 12 Earth masses that take 77 days to orbit the star, and is even smaller in radius than D. And finally, there's an unconfirmed candidate, TOY561F, which is bigger than Neptune at 19 Earth masses, and is about Earth's distance from the star on a 433-day orbit. If this planet is real, it doesn't transit its star from our perspective, making its radius, assuming the planet exists at all, unknown. But anyways, I just had to get TOY561 out of the way before I can talk about the real reason I made this video, Kepler-444. Kepler-444 is a triple star system composed of a small K-type star, 75% the mass and radius of the Sun, and two small red dwarfs orbiting each other on a 324-year-long orbit around the main star. The entire system is somewhere around 11.2 billion years old, older than the estimated age of TOI-561. And most interestingly, the main star hosts five confirmed rocky exoplanets, making them, currently, the oldest known rocky planets in the universe. Better still, some of these planets are among the smallest we currently know of, all five of them being between Mercury and Venus in radius. Kepler-444 is an extremely compact system, with all five planets taking less than 10 days to orbit the main star, and they're all within 0.1 AU of it, all closer than Mercury orbits the Sun. They all have mildly eccentric orbits, with eccentricities between 0.1 for planet E and 0.31 for planet C. All five of these planets are hot, though significantly colder than TOI-561b. Unfortunately, that's pretty much all we can say about them, and next to nothing is known about any of these planets. So far, we only confidently know the masses of two of the five planets, Kepler-444, D, and E. The masses of the other three planets are not currently known, though we can constrain them based on the assumed compositions of the planets. Kepler-444b is the smallest planet in radius, just 42% the radius of Earth, only marginally bigger than Mercury, and is the closest to the star, taking 3.6 days to orbit it. Its assumed maximum mass is about 0.08 Earths, Though keep in mind that hasn't actually been observed, it's only a model. Planet B is likely the hottest planet in its system, assuming none of the other planets have any crazy atmospheric greenhouse effects. Planet C is estimated to be around 0.16 Earth masses, which would be almost identical to Mars, assuming that mass estimate is close to the planet's true mass. It has the most eccentric orbit of any of the five planets, with an eccentricity of 0.31, which is bigger than Mercury's eccentricity of 0.2. It's about half as wide as Earth and has a 4.5 day long year. Though keep in mind that eccentricity could actually be much lower, as currently the eccentricities of the planets cause their orbits to intersect, meaning we could be wrong about them. Planet D is the first planet with a confidently determined mass, around 0.036 Earth masses, making it less massive than Mercury, though larger than it in radius, about 54% Earth's. Its mass, along with planet E's, was found with transit timing variations, as the two planets are close enough together to alter their orbits, allowing for direct measurements of their mass. Planet E is pretty much the exact same size as D, 0.034 Earth masses and 0.55 Earth radii. They take 6.1 and 7.7 .7 days to orbit the star, respectively. And finally, there's Kepler-444f, the largest planet in the system in radius, 76.7% the radius of Earth, with a maximum mass estimate of about 0.22 Earths. It takes 9.7 days to orbit the star, and even though it's the furthest known planet, it's still very hot. All in all, all of the Kepler-444 planets are extremely similar to each other in mass, radius, temperature, and orbit. If I had to guess, I would bet that all five of these planets are airless rocks, and their atmospheres, if they ever had any, stripped away over billions of years of stellar radiation. I also wouldn't be surprised if their surface environments were effectively identical, minus the temperature. But there are extremely old airless rocks, which is pretty interesting. Unfortunately, we can't say anything else about these planets, as their small size makes them extremely difficult to study. So with that, those are some of the oldest rocky planets we know of. A potentially weird large rocky planet that may have a steam atmosphere of some kind, TOI-561b, and a system of five very similar hot sub-Earths, Kepler-444b through f. As mentioned earlier, it's harder to find rocky planets than gas giants by all of our current methods of planet detection, so we don't know of many rocky planets around very old stars. But as more missions start searching for them, we'll probably find a lot of planets similar to this pretty soon. But until then, these are, at least currently, some of the oldest rocky planets we know of in the universe.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space exploration.